our last slab project, I'm going to show you how to make an angel. Again, an upside down dessert size chinette plate. Clay, smooth side showing, another plate on top. Take the tool straight up and down, trim all the way around the edges. I used to make my angels standing up until they all fell down. Then I've learned to make a flat angel that you can hang. Put your scraps in a ball, take the top paper plate off, and what we're going to do first is make our angel's gown. It's going to be like a big slice of pizza. If you tell your students to make a triangle, they cut a little triangle in the middle. But if you tell them to make a big slice of pizza, starting up at the top, cutting down, going up, back up to the top, and cutting down, they understand big slice of pizza. Then we're going to look at our wings. We're going to find the one that's the thickest. We're going to put the thinner ones with the scraps and here are our wings. We can put the wings behind the gown this direction or if you prefer this direction. Completely up to you. Another way that we can make these look more like wings is we can texture them just by tapping the finger into the clay. I'm sure to tell my students to not poke but just to tap into the clay to make a nice little feathery pattern. Also any lines that they see or any crumbs they can just pet out. I really encourage you to not use a lot of water when you're making these projects with clay glue because even though the water is available, if you get too much water on your clay and then paint them immediately with the clay paints, you're going to have a lot of fracturing. So here we go. Let's put the wings behind there, the gown on the top. Let's bring in our clay glue because we need to clay glue the gown to the wings just right here in the middle till it's kind of slimy. Then we can put the gown right on the wings. Sometimes at Teacher In Services I have teachers ask, do you have to clay glue both sides? And no, just one side will work. The next thing we need, our angel needs a head. We're going to take some of our clay and make the good size of a jawbreaker. We're going to roll it around in our hands and then we're going to make the angel's face. I always have the student make the angel's face before we attach it to the gown in case that there's a mistake. They can just roll the head up and start again. We have the pointed end, but remember we also have the flat end and the flat end works really well for eyes. Then you can use the pointed end if you'd like to just draw a little smile on your angel's face. You can also make your angel singing. Let's make the eyes again. And then take the flat part, put it in the mouth, and go up and down and up and down, and then your angel is singing. Beginning artists appreciate being able just to draw the face, but of course your advanced artists will enjoy squishing out a nose, adding eyebrows, that kind of thing. Let's attach our head with a little bit of clay glue. Not at the very tippy top, but of course right here in front on top of the gown. So my angel's looking pretty good. My angel has a gown, my angel has wings, but my angel is bald. And now it's time for the hair maker. Don't get confused and call this a garlic press because it is not. It is a hair maker. We're going to take a pinch of the clay, preferably nice soft clay. We're going to put it into the metal garlic press. Plastic garlic presses will break because the clay is stiff. Push it through and now we have some hair. This also works really well on the mask project if you want to make whiskers. I'm going to put some hair on my angel. I'm putting clay glue all on the head and down and let's get a little bit more for the other side. Now you know we don't have to make girl angels. What we can do is we can make boy angels. Let me show you how to do that. First let's get this on. For a boy angel they just need short hair. So let's get a little bit of clay in here and you just don't squeeze the garlic press quite as far. We just go part way. And that would make short hair for the boys. But of course, you know, the boys feel left out. So let's just say that they could also make a really nice long beard for their boy angels if they would like. Now, after you get the hair nice and attached, it's time for the halo. That's what makes us a little bit different from the angels. And the way that we make a halo, that ring of light that's above the angel's head, take a piece of clay, roll it back and forth in your hands until it's a coil, thick as an Oreo cookie. Bend this into a ring a little bit of clay glue on the halo and stick the halo in the back. There's a nice halo for your angel. We need some arms. Again, we'll take a pinch of the scrap clay, roll it into our hands, bend it up into the letter V and then pinch it at the bottom. This makes two arms that go up to the shoulders and hands that are clasped together. Again, we'll put it on with a little bit of clay glue, opening it up. You can leave the arms down like this or if you'd like, you can pull the hands up like she's praying. I do this project a lot with beginner artists and even though they come out a little squishy, they're just precious. A lot of times it's not the color that you would think an angel would be, but still precious. I also do this project with adults a lot of times and in the hands you'll start seeing musical instruments and books and boots at the bottom, all kinds of fun things. So there's a lot of room for growth in this. At the clay lady check or your teacher check, you wanna put two little holes in it so it'll hang. Flip it over, 
write the student's name on the back, and every now and then if the halo looks a little loose, I just do a little pinch right there to make sure everything holds together, and then it's time to paint. When you go to the painting station, be sure and remind your students that whatever they don't paint is white, because if they want the wings to be white, as in traditional drawings of angels, they will not paint the wings. So there's our angel. Thank you.